Okay, well, I promised you a little bit of information on optical density units, and so here it goes. I'm just going to post this as like a separate little video because, you know, just in case people are uh, concerned about ODUs and what do they mean. Now, optical density is something that really harkens back to the days of film. Uh, and the machine that I'm going to show you in just a minute is used to measure film density. So the only way you can use it is if you have a, like an old school radiographic film or if you have a printout of a um, digital image, you know, a hard copy, which most people don't have nowadays. But the good thing about this optical density stuff is it does kind of help you um, whenever you're looking at exposure indices and digital imaging. A lot of the companies, whenever they came up with their exposure index, they kind of fell back on the optical density scheme where, um, you know, like a factor of three or a factor of 300 might imply a doubling of the, or uh, yeah, like a doubling of the darkness, um, a reduction in brightness you could kind of think of it as because in digital imaging now we talk about brightness instead of density. But I digress. Okay, optical density. Here's the way it works. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little machine, and of course we have to have a radiographic film in order to pull this off, but we're going to take our piece of film and we're going to put it on our little densitometer, this is what the little machine is called, and it's going to shine a light through that image. Okay, now the darker the image is, the less of that light is going to get transmitted. Kind of makes sense? Okay, we're going to shine a bright light, and it's kind of like shining light through a pair of sunglasses. You're never going to get as much light out the other side as you actually transmit it. So, the way we measure optical density is we're going to take the amount of light that we shone through the image, which we're going to, that's always going to have a value of 100, because we're starting out with 100% of our available light. Okay, then our little, um, uh, our little optical device that measures light, measure, uh, it's kind of like a photometer. Um, you remember those things we used to use in camera days when we would try to measure the amount of ambient light so that we could set our f-stop? It kind of works like that. Okay, so we're going to shine 100% of the light down through our image, down through our x-ray, and then on the other side we're going to see how much light actually came through. And so our equation we're going to take our incident light, divide it by the percent that actually transmitted through to the other side, and then we're going to extract the log base 10 of that number. So the way this thing's going to work, and let me just uh, kind of adjust my camera here a little bit. So you can imagine in a case where I, I started out with 100% of my available light, and then I measured the amount that came through on the other side, Oh gosh, okay, maybe green wasn't such a good choice here. 100%. Okay, and then say on the other side, I came up with something like 10%. Okay, so like 10% of my available light came through. Okay, well, 100 divided by 10, and I know this is some really easy math. Okay, 100 divided by 10 is 10. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 10. Percentages cancel, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is my, my optical density, remember, is going to be equal to the log of 10. And this is log base 10. Okay, and if you break out your calculator and you say, okay, well 10, and then take the log base 10 of 10, you're going to find that that's equal to 1. Okay, so if my, the particular area of film that I'm looking at is transmitting 10% of the light, then that's going to have an optical density value of 1. Okay, so what if this thing had an optical density value of 2? Well, if it's a 2, then that means that only 1% of the light came through. And... Let me just kind of show you how that goes. Okay, so if I, if I illuminate 100% of the light, and then I read how much came through, 
and I, I saw only 1% of my light coming through. Okay, well, 100 over 1 is 100, and the log base 10 of 100 is 2, because 10 to the second power equals 100. Okay, hopefully everybody knows how logarithms work. If you don't, go back to like your Algebra 1 book, and, and I'm sure it's in there somewhere. It'll explain the whole thing. And come to think of it, most radiography textbooks will also explain the whole thing. Much better than I can. Okay, so let's do some practical examples. Be right back. Got a couple of images here. Um, these are both abdomen images. I guess uh, this image over here you could call the case of the terrible stomach ache. And this one over here, uh, maybe we could call that the case of the missing quarter. All right, anyway, I digress. Um, optical density units. So if we're going to take this image and we want to measure the relative optical density between different areas of the image so that we can kind of determine um, our level of contrast, for example, well, what we can do is take our densitometer and we can measure some of the darker areas and then we can measure some of the lighter areas and do a comparison. This device is our densitometer. Its sole function is to measure the darkness of radiographic film. So first things first, let's power this guy on. Okay, and then we're going to turn on the backlight, and hopefully this isn't going to dazzle everybody. Okay, there it is. Um, the backlight just helps us determine where we are on the image whenever we, um, you know, go to do our measures. Now, I'm going to push down on this button here. Okay, we have to null it out every time we use it. Okay, so now I've told it, if there's nothing there, then that has a density of 0.0. .0. In other words, 100% of the light is being transmitted at that point. All right, so let's take this image. I don't know if you can see that too well or not, but we've got some areas here that are dark with bowel gas. Okay, so if I'm going to measure one of these areas, well, that's got an optical density of 2.43. Okay, so that's really really dark. This is one of those cases where less than one percent of the light is getting through. And if you take a look at the image you can see, oh, okay, yeah, that's pretty dark. Okay, what if we go down here to this black area and we take a look at that? What, is that number going to be high or low? Well, turns out it's going to be pretty dang high. Okay, 2.97 is what that's telling me. Okay, now let's take an area of the image that is very, very light. You see this surgical hardware right here? It looks like that's some kind of a stabling device for the lumbar spine. Okay, let's measure it and see what it looks like. If we put that in our crosshairs and we make our measurement, that's a 0 0.34. Okay, so in this case, almost all the light is getting through. which makes sense because see how light that is you know you can just see right through it so any light that hits this is going to pass through basically unimpeded point three five okay now what about some bone okay bone is kind of grayish um, you know so some lights getting through but not all so let's take a look in one of these um, lumbar vertebral bodies and see what its darkness is. Okay, 0 0.81. It's light, but it's not as light as the previous um, area that we looked at, obviously, because this is metal and this is bone. So you guys kind of get how this works. If 100% of the light's getting through, then we're zero. If no light's getting through, well, okay, some light's getting through, but still, this is almost an optical density value of 3, so that means that only 1 1,000th one of the incident light is getting through. All right, so hopefully that makes sense, kind of, sort of. Okay, so remember your equation. 
Optical density is the logarithm of the incident over the transmitted, where the incident has always got a value of 100. So we can kind of reverse engineer the amount of light getting through if we know the optical density, um, which we'll do in just a second. But I also wanted to point out this. Diagnostic range, 0 0.5 to 2.5. Remember just a minute ago when we had an optical density of like 0 0.35, something like that? Okay, that optical density is so low that it's just white. You can't really see anything. Very, very high contrast though, so if you've got a metallic object that you're looking for, then you can easily spot that if its optical density is super low because it's going to be just like gleaming white. Okay, so I'm going to brush off my math major for a minute and see if I can remember how to do this. Now, as you remember from just a few minutes ago, we were over at the densitometer and we measured an optical density of 0 0.35 approximately. Okay, so, um, you know, how much light is getting through if we have an optical density of 0.35? We know a pretty good amount of our light, um, but this is a logarithmic function, so it may not be as much as we originally thought. Anyways, check this out. Okay, so I've got 0 0.35 is equal to the log of 100, because that's our constant we always have, over some number x, and that's going to be the percent of light that got transmitted. Okay, so how do we solve this equation? Well, if we want to get rid of this logarithm thing here, what we can do, and this will balance the equation, we're going to say 10, because remember, this is a log base 10. So 10 to the 0.35 is going to be equal to, and since we're raising our 0.35 to the power of 10, that's going to get rid of the logarithm over here, is equal to 100 over x. Okay? Okay, so if we want to get um, x by itself, then what we can do is say, okay, we're going to multiply both sides by x, right, and then divide both sides by 10 to the 0.35. Okay, so that gives us our x over on the left side is equal to 100 over 10 to the 0.35. And so now we just have to do this mathematics. Okay, now, it just so happens, let's see if you guys can see all this. It just so happens that 10 to the 0.35, so we'll say 0.35, and then raise 10 to that power is 2.2. Okay, so this is going to be 100 over this 2.23 approximately. 100 divided by 2.23 equals uh, 44.8, so about 45. Right. So x equals 45. And remember, we're talking about percents here. I forgot to put that business in, but so 45%. So if you're looking at an image and you do an optical density measurement and you see, oh, hang on a second. If you're doing an optical density measurement and you see that it's got an optical density of 0.35, then you know that that thing is transmitting about 45% of the available light. Okay. Um, Hopefully that is kind of clarifying things as far as how optical density units work. Um, you may or may not ever have to use these due to the fact that um, most of our systems now are digital, so you probably don't have to hassle with film anyway. But just in case you're wondering, this is how it works. All right, so thanks very much for tuning in to X-ray education. Hopefully it was at least a little bit educational. And um, we'll be back and see you again next time. Bye.